half car, half tractor. It was designed for farmers the world over, but has been used with a passion by everyone from royalty to extreme explorers. It was, of course, the Land Rover. Marketed as the farmer's friend, it was built using post-war leftovers, a marriage of ingenuity and necessity designed as a short-term quick fix for an ailing British car company. So how did a hurriedly improvised post-war stopgap become an international success? And in my humble opinion, the greatest British workhorse ever built. In the years following World War II, factories struggled from ongoing shortages of all sorts of raw materials, including steel. One company that was seriously feeling the post-war pinch was Rover, which was famous for making prestige cars like this P3. Now, this P3 is made mainly out of steel. Steel was scarce, and Rover couldn't physically make enough P3s to survive. Steel was only allocated to companies that exported their products. Rover didn't. So they needed to come up with a machine to sell overseas. It just so happened that Rover's technical director, Morris Wilkes, was using a war surplus US Army Willys Jeep to get around his holiday home on Anglesey. Although Wilkes hated to admit it, the American's ingenious four-wheel drive Jeep was brilliant for odd jobs on rough ground and much faster than dragging out a tractor. But spare Jeep parts were becoming hard to get hold of. One Easter, while on holiday, Wilkes had a brainwave. Why not design his own version of the Jeep for Rover to build and sell overseas? He sketched his idea in the sand for his brother Spencer, who happened to be managing director of Rover. It was unlike anything Rover had ever built before, but... Spencer was sold, so they trundled off to Rover HQ to present the idea to the board. This is block one of what was then Rover's Solihull factory, where the Wilkes brothers had their offices. I'm here to ask Land Rover historian Roger Craythorn just how easy it was for them to persuade the board. But this was a, a total departure, really, from, from the manufacturer of prestige cars, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And the company very quickly realised that they needed to do something to create export orders. And um, they tried to replicate the Jeep, but not as a military vehicle, more of a vehicle for the farming community. So there you have the ideal vehicle to sort of move the hay bales and the milk churns during the day and then um, take the wife out to the theatre of an evening. The Wilkes brothers also realised that a lightweight 4x4 would be ideal for the rough roads of the Commonwealth. This just might be the export market Rover was looking for. But their new machine would have to be extremely tough and reliable in the worst imaginable conditions. While many cars and even the Routemaster bus were switching to monocoque designs, Wilt stuck with a tough steel ladder chassis frame. But Rover didn't have enough steel to make the rest of the bodywork. So Wilkes turned to a material that was sitting around in plentiful stockpiles after the war. Yes, you've guessed it. Aluminium again. Mostly flat panels with a minimum of shaping, nice and easy to make. And you can bash it around, dent it, scratch it. It won't rust. An inspired feature was what they called the power takeoff, with which you could drive all sorts of different tools with the Landy's engine. Great for odd jobs around the farm, no tractor required. 